Hello, hi everybody. Right. Why is the class trend so less today? Why is one, one, two, three, four of you are there? Last class, I think so many of you were there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Just give me a second. I'll just download the BPT. Okay, so now I think share my screen. So I hope everybody is able to see my screen. Can you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So obviously today we'll be discussing acid bases and salts, right? We just go through the questions and wherever required, we'll be seeing the concepts, right? Okay, fine. So the first question. Hey, yeah, okay. This is the first question. Uh, do I have? Are you able to see uh, read everything, or you have, you have, you only do a little maximize it? No, sir, it's fine. Right. Okay, fine. So, which of the following compound is sort of acidic in nature? Let me. Okay. Right. Which of the following compounds are going to be acidic in nature? Now, all you have to understand is, right, your C3H8 is there. C3H8 is alkane, that is CH3, CH2, CH3, right? CN, H2N plus 2. C3H8, right? Now, C22, uh, C12, H22, O11 is what is called as? C12, H22, O11. I think this is stearic acid. I don't know why these kind of questions are asked. Anyways, this is stearic acid. So definitely this is going to be acidic in nature. The CH4 is again going to be methane, which is not acidic. Again, normal hydrocarbon. All, all alkanes are going to be not acidic. Okay. And whereas C2H2, if I write, that is CH triple bond CH. Now understand that whenever I'm going to have triple bond carbon attached to a nitrogen, that will be able to come out as H plus. That means all these kind of compounds are acidic in nature. This is what is C2H2. That is an CN H2N minus 2. Right? Okay. So definitely the answer of this question is going to be B as well as D. Right? We'll just check the answer whether it's correct. Okay, the answer is not given. Right? Anyways, these kind of questions are not, are not going to come for you. Don't worry about it. Okay, these are you know 11th class concepts, right? You don't know about them yet. Don't worry about them. Okay, anyways, the answer to the question will be B and D. Next, KOH is going to be a strong base since in solution it forms what? Obviously, any base is something which Nitin right? Shankar, there is some problem with your uh. Uh, connectivity, is here, is connectivity, I guess. I'm not able to uh, hear anything, and all you're able to hear some is noise. Okay, fine. So any ba base is something which I'm going. If I'm going to dissolve it in water, right, and if it is going to produce OH minus, those are going to be called as bases. 
right? So obviously it's going to be a strong base because like I can say that the amount of OH minus and the strength of the base are directly proportional. Okay, the amount of OH minus produced and your strength of the base are going to be that way. If a dollar base is going to produce more amount of OH minus, then that base is going to be called as a strong base. Okay, right. So obviously the answer of this question is going to be more number of OH minus. So OH minus, are to, OH minus are getting produced, right? Again, K plus has no role to play, right? It is because of OH minus you're getting basic nature, right? So obviously, and I have, since it's a strong base, they're telling definitely I'm going to have more amount of OH minus getting produced. Okay, right. Moving on to the next question. Right. Bleaching powder is produced by action of chlorine on water. Right. Please understand the reaction for bleaching powder. This is how the reaction happens. What happens? CaOH OH twice, twice plus Cl2 gives CaCl2 plus CaOCl2. No, CaOCl twice, right? Plus H2O. Right, this is what is going to happen, and this CaOCl twice is nothing but your bleaching powder, calcium oxychloride. We call it. Right, this is what is called as your bleaching powder. It's a very important reaction. CaOH twice plus Cl two will give CaCl two plus OCl CaOCl twice plus H two O. Right, and what is this called as? This is what is called calcium as your hydroxide. potassium hydroxide. But potassium Calcium hydroxide in general, if it is an aqueous solution, Slaked. it is going to be called as slaked line. This we saw last time only. Right? The aqueous solution of a CaOH twice is what is called as your slaked line. Slaked. Right? And obviously, I cannot use dry slaked line, right? Because dry slaked there is nothing called as dry slaked line, first of all. It is going to be that it is it is going to have some water. Right. So obviously the answer of this question would be moist slaked line. Okay. Right, sir. Yeah. yeah. Also, be beef. sir. Uh, the re is the reaction right, sir? Isn't it like Five. the products will be CaO Cl two plus H two? No, you are going to have CaCl two also getting formed. This is right okay. only. Okay. Okay. Right. If at all, if CaCl two is not given your NCRT, it is wrong. Okay. CaCl two is getting produced. Okay. Just because your book says it, it is not going to be correct. Okay. okay? Right. Fine. So calcium hydroxide, okay, if you think that calcium hydroxide can be the answer to this question, yeah, you can think about it, but you understand that this reaction, if you look at your textbook, they would have given, it is action of Cl2 with slaked line. That's what they would have given, right? Because calcium hydroxide, this CaOCH twice, can be in solid state, can be in aqueous state, it can be anything that is not getting specified here, right? So the most probable answer, Right. If none of them was there, only calcium hydroxide is there, then definitely we will go for calcium hydroxide. But in this case, there are more appropriate answers, right? So definitely you'll go yes. for moist slaked lime only. So, but in our NCRT textbook, it's given as action of chlorine on dry slaked lime, sir. Dry slaked lime they have given. Yes, okay. sir. Then, yeah, then we just change it then. Okay, dry slaked lime would be the answer there. Okay, fine. Moving on. Next, uh, find the incorrect statement. Okay, you have to find the wrong statement. The pH of stomach is approximately 4.5. Now, all that you have to understand is yeah, in your pH, we are going to have you know uh, some acid present. And what is the acid present in your stomach? Hydrochloric acid. HCl is going to be a strong acid, right? Right. Okay, HCl is going to be a strong acid. So this potentially might be, you know, an, a wrong statement because HCl is a strong acid and all the strong acids are going to have pH to be generally between zero and three, right? For strong acids. Anyways, we'll check the other ones, right? Plants grow well in natural soil. Okay. That is definitely correct. The pH of acid drain is nearly 5.6. Yes. This is yes. actually believable, right? So, now, why okay. is it believable? Even though you don't know any numbers as such, but still you'll be able to analyze and tell, tell me the answer. Okay. Right. Now, acid drain, why is it getting formed? It is getting formed because of carbon dioxide. Right. Now, this carbon dioxide, when it is going to react with water, if I have high amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, <coughs> that is going to react with water vapor. Right. And it is going to produce or it is going to react with your liquid water to produce H2CO3. This is what is called as your carbonic acid. 
and this is going to come out as rains right that is why we call it as acid rain instead of water what is going to come out is h2co3 that is your carbonic acid and this is a weak acid right this is not a strong acid this is a weak acid so it, we can expect that the ph will be less than 7 that is all that we can say ph less than 7 is going to be an acid ph greater than 7 is going to be a base again lower and lower the ph stronger and stronger the acid is higher and higher the ph stronger the base is right okay anyways so you understand that this is going to if if i say that this is going to be close to 7 5.6 it's not it's believable okay fine next uh, ph of rain water is nearly 7 yes we can say that if it is going to be proper rain water no acid rain nothing i'm going to have only water which is neutral right so definitely this statement is also going to be okay right but yeah so definitely whatever we suspected is what is going to be the answer this ph cannot be 4.5 it is way higher for a strong acid like hcl it is going to be between 0 and 3 only okay so what is going to be the wrong statement here the wrong statement is a. A. Okay. okay next moving on which of the following is the correct order of acidic strength of acid okay uh, correct order of acidic strength right we have to you know certain times remember the list okay when i look Look at uh, the strong acids. If I write SA, it is the strong acid list. You can have HCl, HNO3, H2SO4. Right? These are the common examples you will take for strong acids. Right? So, this B and, the right answer. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, uh, then weak acids say H2CO3, uh, HCN, CH3COOH, that is your acetic acid. All these are examples for weak acids. Okay, same way I'll be able to talk about strong bases. Strong bases are only three. You have NaOH, KOH, and CaOH twice. Right? Rest of all the bases, weak bases, other than that, whatever hydroxides you have, all of them will come under you know weak bases. Okay, fine. Now, what all is given here? A hydrochloric acid HCl is given, and water is given. And acidic acid is given. CH3COOH is given in the question. Right. Now we can say for sure the strongest acid among them is HCl because that is going to be a strong acid. Like you will in when you go to your 11th class, you'll actually understand why is it that HCl is strong or H2CO3 is weak. We'll try to understand that. Okay. But for now, we have we they, they have to remember them. We remember them. Right. All right. Next. Next we have water and CH3COOH. Now water I know is neutral. <clears throat> Right, at least CH3COH is a weak acid, but still it is an acidic in nature. Right, so obviously the second rank goes to CH3COH, and the least of all acidic is going to be for H2O. Right, so now water should be the least, and HCl should be the greatest. Water is the least, so B is the answer to this question. Okay, I hope everybody get it. Got it. Okay, moving on. Chemical formula of baking soda. What is baking soda? Quick, 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 what is it? NaHCO3. NaHCO3. What is washing soda? Na2CO3. Okay. What is milk of magnesia? MgH twice. Okay. What is milk of lime? Okay. Right. Milk of lime might not be there in the book. Milk of lime is what is CaOH twice. Right. Milk of magnesia is MgOH twice. Okay. Right. Anyways, here if they're asking about baking soda, it is obviously going to be NHCO3. Right. Next, moving on. If a few drops of concentrated acid actually uh, accidentally spills over a hand of a student, what should be done? Right. Concentrated acid is this thing. Okay. Fine. First, they're telling us after washing with plenty of water, apply solution of sodium hydroxide on the hand. Okay. We'll see what is it. Neutralize the acid with a strong alkali. Now, this is definitely going to be wrong. Okay. Now, why is it going to be wrong? Because, because you, you say, no, 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 no. What you have to understand is uh, your acid is going to be corrosive. It is going to actually corrode your skin, right? And strong bases like NaOH, KOH, they are also going to be corrosive in nature. Okay. Now that is also going to, you know, burn more because of corrosion, right? So this can definitely not be the answer. This you cannot do. Next. Wash the hands with saline solution. I don't think this is going to, saline is what NaCl. Okay, I don't think this is going to help us anything. Okay, next. Uh, wash the hand immediately with plenty of water and apply a paste of sodium hydrogen carbonate. What is the sodium hydrogen carbonate? What is the formula? NaHCO3. Baking soda. 
Now, NaHCO3 is actually a very weak base. Right? You might have known from your acid bases in the chapter that even your CO3 2 minuses, that is your Na Na2 CO3 or HCO3 or CaCO3, whatever it is, and HCO3 minus ions are weakly basic. That is the if at all you have NaCO3 or NaHCO3, those salts are actually going to be weakly basic in nature. Okay, fine. Now this is what you need to do. Why? Because if you are, you have to wash your land with plenty of water, obviously, right? And you have to apply a paste of a base so that it will neutralize the acid, but you cannot have a strong base because it is going to be corrosive. So all you have to do is go for a weak base. Hydrogen to sodium, hydrogen carbonate is the perfect example, right? So you can definitely mark D as your correct answer. Okay. Right. Moving on. Uh, between dilute and concentrated samples of H2O3, which sample of H2O3 will have a higher H plus concentration? Concentrated. Concentrated. That's it. Very simple. What is when I say concentration? If I say concentration of a solution. More H plus ions. Right. In general, a solution means I'm going to have a concentration, nothing but the amount of solute present. <coughs> right? The what is what do you mean by concentration of a solution? How much amount of solute is there present in the solution? That term, that amount is what is called as your concentration. Right? So when I say a concentrated solution, means I'm going to have high amount of concentration, the high amount of solute. And here the solute is what? Solute is the acid. And water is the solvent. We're talking about aqueous solutions of HNO3. And okay. So if I say a concentrated HNO3, there I'm going to have more amount of HNO3. And in case of your dilute solutions, I'm going to have less amount of HNO3. So obviously, wherever I'm going to have more, more concentration or more amount of solute, there only I'm going to have more H plus concentration, right? So the answer would be A. Okay, right. Next. Next. Acidic acid was acidic acid. You know what is the formula? Acidic acid, what is the formula? CH3COH. 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 Right, fine. Was added to a solid X kept in a test tube. A colorless, orderless gas was evolved. That is gas Y was evolved. The gas was passed through lime water, which turned. The gas is carbon dioxide. Definitely, right? So many times you would have seen this, right? So what are you telling is this CH3COH is reacting with X to form Y which is nothing but CO2 because that is only going to react with CaOH twice. That is your lime water to form CaCO3 plus okay, CaCO3 and this is going to be a precipitate. Right? A white precipitate is going to get turns milky. That this, this, this is going to turn milky because of CaCO3. Okay? Right. So definitely we can say that Y is carbon dioxide. Right? So what should have been X? Right? Now all you have to understand is uh, Okay, X is sodium acetate, X is sodium hydroxide. Okay, now what is going to happen? Whenever you have, no, sodium bicarbonate is going to be the answer. Anyways, now whenever you have an acid reacting with a carbonate or a bicarbonate, right? What are going to be the products? You are going to form salt plus, plus water, water plus CO2. CO2. Right? This is the only difference between normal bases and carbonate and bicarbonates as bases. They are also going to give you neutralization reaction only. Acid plus base is going to give you salt plus water. But what is going to be extra? Extra yeah, is going to be carbon dioxide. Okay, right. So definitely your acid is CH3COH here. So this should be a base. Then only I'll be able to form CO2. Right. And at the base should be what? This base should contain CO3 2 minus. Then only you'll be able to produce a CO2. Normal base, if you do normal acid, the salt plus salt will come. CO2 will not come. Right? So definitely, can I say out of these options, X should have been any NHCO3 because that is that is where I that is where I see all the options. I mean, some options are there, right? And Y should definitely be CO2. Right? So X is sodium bicarbonate, that is NHCO3, and Y is CO2 will definitely be the answer to this question. Right. Sir, why carbon dioxide odorless? Why carbon dioxide is all odorless? It's like, why are you now 15 years old? No, sir. It's I mean, like if a candle is burning, you can feel the smell, right? Oh, that is not only carbon dioxide. No, There are so many other gases coming along with it. Okay, that's why. Okay, sir. 
right? Why carbon dioxide is not less? Because that is the nature of carbon dioxide. That is how it exists in nature, right? Okay, fine. Moving on. <clears throat> okay, litmus is an example of what kind of indicator it is? Natural indicator. Nat uh, because it is, okay. Now, how do you say it is natural indicator? It is derived from what? Lichen. Derived from a plant called lichen. It is lichens. Oh, anyways, right? It is a natural indicator. Okay, fine. Anyways, next. Uh, one of the constituent of baking powder is sodium hydrogen carbonate. The other component is what? Tartaric acid. acid. Yes, absolutely. This is not this is not memory based. You have to remember it. Okay, baking powder contains sodium hydrogen, NaHCO3, and tartaric acid. Okay. Right. Next. During the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas on a humid day, the gas is usually passed through a guard tube containing calcium chloride. The role of calcium chloride is what? Now, please understand. They are trying. They are telling that. We are going to produce H2 plus mean H2 uh, plus Cl2 reacting to form HCl gas. Okay. Now I want to state this as gas only. Okay. Now, why is it that I have to go for CaCl2? Is because you will understand that this, if it reacts with water, right? If this is going to react with water, I am going to form HCl aqueous solution. And that HCl aqueous solution is going to give me H plus plus Cl minus. Basically, the HCl gas is not acidic. Please understand. Once I dissolve that gas in water, then it gives me H plus, and then I can call only HCl aqueous solution as an acid. HCl gas is not acidic. Okay, right? That is what that you should not say anything which gives me H plus as an acid. No, that is a very wrong statement. Anything which, when dissolved in water, then if it gives me H plus, those kind of things are what are called as acids. Same goes with your base. In anything which gives me OH minus is not a base. How will I get OH minus? Only if you dissolve in water, then you get OH minus. Those are your bases. So NaOH, if you have in solid form, no, that is not going to give you any OH minus. This is not a base. Right? Whereas if I write NaOH aqueous solution, that is, that means what is dissolved in water, then that can give me OH minus. So this can be called as a base. Okay. Anyways, so I don't want it to become acidic. Okay, I want HCl gas to stay not acidic. If it reacts, it's going to react with water, it is going to become an acid. I don't want that to happen. And all that you have to understand is that your CaCl2 calcium chloride, where should I write it? Okay, here it is a dehydrating agent. Okay, your calcium chloride is a dehydrating agent. Okay. So that is how once the HCl gas is produced, the CaCl2 is passed over it so that H2O is removed. It's a dehydrating, what do you mean by dehydrating? Remove, removing water molecules from the substance, right? So obviously what is going to be the answer? It is going to absorb moisture from the gas. Moisture is what is water, right? So answer for this question is A, right? Okay, next. Hey, everybody understood? Anybody want me to repeat again whatever happened here? Awesome. Okay. Next question. Statement here. HCl does not show acidic property in organic solvent. Again, a beautiful question. Right? HCl, uh, gas, obviously we said it is not acidic. Right? But HCl, say if I dissolve it in, I don't know, some benzene. I don't know if you know what benzene is. Have you ever heard of this term benzene? Yes, sir. Oh? Yes, sir. Okay. Or... Have you heard this term, at least not from chemistry, but from your movies, chloroform? Yes. Sir. Okay. Where, where, where do you use it? In which movie or I don't know, you don't have to tell me which movie is it, but uh, in what kind of scenarios you would have used this term chloroform? It's usually used to like make someone faint or something. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Say, for example, I want to kidnap somebody. What will I do? I will take the kerchief. Spray something and keep it in their nose and they faint, right? That spray is nothing but your chloroform. Okay. All right. Chloroform, if you want to know what is the formula, it is CHCl3. Okay. Any, any generally any compound containing carbon and hydrogen is what is called as your organic compounds. Okay. Right. So if I dissolve HCl in a compound, in a in an organic solvent, these are what are called as organic solvents, like this thing, nothing will happen. They will just stay, right? 
it will not be able to give me H plus. But if H2O plus HCl, this if you do, that is going to give me HCl aqueous and that can give me H plus and CKL plus. Okay. Right. So definitely HCl does not show acidic properties in organic solvent is absolutely true because no H plus is coming out. Okay. Whereas HCl shows acidic properties in aqueous solution, obviously. When I'm going to dissolve it in H2O, then H plus is coming out, then it is showing me or is that acidic distinct? Right. So which statement is true? Both are true. Both statements are true. Both A and B are true, obviously. Right. Both A and B are true. Right. Next. Which of the following is true for acids? Okay. They are sore and change litmus to blue. Is it correct? No, sir. What about uh, taste are they? They are sour, but they change red. They change blue litmus to red. Okay. That's right. Guys, basically, acids are bitter in taste. Okay. Right. Acids are bitter in taste. Sir, are acids sour? Oh, bases are bitter in taste. Yeah, that's good. Yes, sir. That's good. These are sore and taste only. Okay, fine. Right. Next, what what happens with the litmus? Acids turn uh, red. Sorry, a blue to red is what they do. No, it is red to blue, right? No, sir, it's uh, blue to red only. Sir, it's blue to red. Okay, blue to red only. And bases are going red to change to red to blue. Okay, right. So, anyways, so the answer should be sore in taste and it should be able to change your blue to red. To red is what should be there. Sore and change the color, blue litmus to red. That's there. That's what is there. Okay, fine. Next. Toothpaste are generally what? Basic, what basic in nature. Ah, right. So, now, guys, this, this is something which you can learn from your real life situation also. Right. If at all, uh, everything we eat, Right, right from rice or sambas and idlis and noodles and burgers and pizzas and whatnot. Right, everything once it goes into your mouth, it is going to become a little acidic in nature. Okay, so the pH of your mouth should be almost little neutral, it should be okay. It's not been too and neither too acidic nor too basic, it should be right. But when you eat, as I said, your mouth becomes a little acidic, right? So obviously, you want to protect your mouth, that you want to protect your teeth. Right. So definitely at those times you have to use a base and that those basic things are going to be there in the toothpaste. Right. So toothpaste are going to neutralize these extra food particles which are there in the form of acidic substances and your tooth is fine. Right. So definitely toothpaste are going to be basic in nature. Right. Next. Uh, what colors do the following indicators turn when they're added to an acid? This is hydrochloric acid. Okay. Now litmus, obviously what will happen? It will change. Blue to red. That we know, right? What happens to methyl orange? It'll change to red. Yeah, I think it changes to red. Okay. So methyl orange, if I take, right, it is going to become yellow in basic solutions. Right, and I, I don't methyl orange in acidic solution is going to become now no red one is sir. red only. Oh, yes, sir. Right, so this is going to change to red color in acidic solutions. Okay, fine. So this will be red, and this will be blue to red. Okay, next. Uh, state the purpose of developing a pH scale. Nothing. pH scale. Why is it developed? It is just to talk about the strength of H plus and H. of a acids and bases, nothing else. Right? They want to just talk about the strength of acids so, and bases. Um, can we also say that it's to find out the concentration of H plus ions in an acid? Ah, yes, concentration of H plus ions and OH minus ions in acids and bases. That is also okay. Right? Okay. Mention the pH range for acids and bases. Now, for, for acids, acid, zero to for seven. acids, it's zero to yeah, seven. pH should and be equal to zero to seven. seven. And for base, it should be equal to zero, seven to fourteen. Okay. Right. Next. What do you understand the strength of an acid? On what factor the strength of acid depends? <clears throat> okay. Now, when I say strength of an acid, 
we already spoke about this is directly proportional to the amount of H plus ions produced by the acid. Right? So what do you understand? This, for example, say if I have an acid like HCl and if I dissolve it in water, it is going to give me H plus HCl minus. Okay. Now say if at all I have some 10 grams of this acid. Okay. Now what will happen is uh, say at time t is equal to 0, we have. Right. Now this will be at the starting of the reaction, nothing would have happened, 0 and 0. Right now, at, at the end of the reaction, at the end of this thing, what is going to happen is this entire thing would have become zero, and this entire 10 grams would have been coming out as H plus and Cl minus. Here, we have 10 grams totally, H plus plus Cl minus totally. Okay, you have to remember the law of conservation of mass. Right, you cannot say H plus is 10 grams now. Right, okay, anyways, now that what are you seeing here when this is a strong acid, right? I know this is a strong acid. All strong acids are, we can say that they are going to be 100% dissociated. What do you mean dissociated? That particular co entire compound is going to dissociate as H plus and Cl minus. Right? Okay. Those, those That's what happens in strong acids. All right. But when I'm going to take a weak acid, let me insert the page. That's fine. Right. So when I'm going to have, say, a weak acid like CH3COOH, now that is going to give me CH3COO minus plus H plus. Say, if I start with 10 gram of this at time T is equal to zero, the starting of the reaction here, nothing will be there. Now, when I go to the end of the reaction, this wouldn't have become zero, but maybe say it would have become some four grams still is remaining. That means, obviously, this side I would have gotten only six grams. Right. So now what you understand, definitely out of the 10 grams, only six grams have gone and undergone the dissociation to give me H plus ions. Right. Same 10 grams we took, but in case of HCl, entire 10 grams is giving me H plus, but in this case, only six grams is giving me H plus. Right. So whenever we say that around uh, 30 to 60 percent dissociation is only happening. Dissociation is only happening, those will be weak acids. Okay? Right? Fine. Uh, so, the, basically, when I say strength of the acid, it is all about the degree of dissociation. That's the best way to put it. When I say it's talking about the strength of an acid, right, we are actually talking about this term called as degree degree of dissociation, right? How much dissociation is happening? How much percentage dissociation is happening? More and more percentage is happening, more and more H plus ions are produced and more and more strength of the acid is, okay? Right, now next thing is, next question they're asking is, sorry, ah, next thing what they're asking is on what factors the strength of acid depends, right? Now that is again going to be a very unwanted statement, but I mean, Oh, this should have been here, right? Oh. oh no. Right. Why is it coming here? Okay, right. Now, on what factors it depends? Right? So, definitely the amount of water you add. Actually, we did a wrong thing in one of the questions. We're going to correct it now. Right? So, the amount of water you add. Right? So, what you understand is say I have a CH3COOH. Okay, and obviously, only if I put some amount of water, it is going to give me H plus. Forget about the anion. Okay, anion is also going to be CH3CO minus. Okay. Now, what you understand is if you add only little amount of water and only little amount of H plus will come out, right? Say, for example, I have 10 grams of this and I added some 100 ml of water. 
and say this is always this is going to the amount, amount of h plus coming out i don't know so is some 2 grams i'm just giving you some random values okay right but if i'm going to add the for the same 10 grams if i am going to add 200 ml of this right the amount of h plus produced should be around 4 grams right that means more and more water you add more and more it is going to get dissolved more and more h plus is going to come okay so when i want to compare a dilute acid and a concentrated acid which will have higher concentration of h plus If I'll ask you the question again. Dilute acid. Dilute one. Because that is what I'm trying to say here. You add 200 ml for the same 10 gram of acid, but how many grams of H is coming? 4 grams of H is coming. Right? But when I add 100 ml for the same 10 grams of CHCOH, we are seeing only 2 grams are coming. Right? So more and more. Are you telling the pH of a dilute acid is more than that of a concentrated acid? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? P, P, no, 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 no. Please understand. Your H plus amount of H plus and your pH are inversely proportional. Okay, that means if I'm going to have very high concentration of H, that means if it's very, very strong acid, that means you have very, very low pH. Okay. Are you able to get the point? Yes, sir. Are you there, Kano? Yes, Whomever asked the question. Okay, fine. So the amount of H plus concentration and pH are inversely proportional. You don't have to worry about how this is happening and all. It is, you are going to have a formula when you go to 11th class, you'll we'll study about more of these things. Okay. So first factor is that the amount of H2O and the amount of H2O and strength are going to be directly proportional. Okay. Right. And second thing is uh, to what anion it is attached. Right. For example, if H plus is attached to Cl minus, it will be a strong acid. Whereas it is going to attach to a CH3CO minus, it is going to be a weak acid. Right. So we can actually say, instead of speaking like this, if it is organic or inorganic, that is also going to be a factor. Okay. Inorganic means your HCl, HNO3, all these are inorganic, and anything which has carbon and hydrogen, as I told you, is going to be organic. Okay. So CH3CO is going to be a you know, organic acid, so it's a weak acid, right? Whereas inorganic acids are going to be strong acids. Okay, these are the ways by which we'll be able to speak. Okay, right, moving on. Next, how do metal carbon react with acid? We have already seen this, right? And for example, Na2CO3 will react with acid HCl to form the salt NaCl to form the water H2O and extra carbon dioxide is going to get released. Right, whenever carbonates or bicarbonates react with acid, they'll produce salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Right, this is the example. Right, okay. Next, give one example, give the constituents of basic baking powder. We know what are they NaCO3 and so tartaric acid is going to be there. Why cake or bread swells on eating and adding baking uh, soda? Right, chemical equation. Yeah, carbon dioxide is going to get released. I think if you had NaHCO3, that is your baking powder, I think when you bake it, right, when you heat it, you are going to form Na2CO3 plus CO2. No, 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 no. Uh, this is not the reaction. CO2, how is it getting produced? It is because of CO2 formation. That is why it is becoming fluffy. And okay, let me check this. Okay, so what and all is first going to be present in baking powder? You are going to have NaHCO3. You are going to have tartaric acid. 
Actually, instead of tartaric acid, what will be the better way of writing is potassium tartrate. Okay. And the next one is starch, cornstarch, we call it. Okay. Now, why I'm going to reduce oh, what we wrote was correct only. Fine. So, NADCO3 on heating is going to give me NADCO3 plus H2O plus CO2. Right. And it's because of the presence of CO2 coming out, it becomes very fluffy. Right. Everything you have to write. So, NADCO3 is present, tartaric acid is present. I mean, not tartaric acid, potassium tartrate is present and cornstarch. And why is it becoming fluffy? Is because when I heat it, it is going to produce your NADCO3 plus H2O plus CO2. Because of the evolution of CO2, it is going to swell. Okay. Right. Next question. Uh, to the three solutions listed below, a few drops of phenolphthalein and blue litmus were added separately. Specify the color change in each of them. Right. Sodium carbonate, phenolphthalein, what is going to happen? No change. Right. Phenolphthalein plus your base, that two strong bases, right, will give you pink color. Right, this is colorless. Okay, right, fine. So what happens when phenolphthalein, I have a strong base, it is going to give me pink color. I know sodium carbonate is a base, but it's a weak base. So there's not going to be any change. Hydrochloric acid, again, it's an acid, no change. Sodium chloride, again, no change. Okay, sodium chloride is basic. See, so, is neutral. Again, nothing is going to happen. Right? Fine. Color change is blue litmus. Blue litmus, sodium carbonate, uh, acid change is blue to red. Again, nothing will change. Nothing will change. And so, okay, sorry, hydrochloric acid is going to give me a red color. Right? And sodium chloride again, no change. Okay? Right? Fine. I think uh, phenolphthalein and strong base can Na2CO3 give. Oh, sodium bicarbonate doesn't give. Okay. Okay. So guys, here it is going to be pink. Okay. So all that you understand is the basis like NaOH, KOH, CaOH twice, and Na2CO3 will give, right? But not NaHCO3. Okay. NaHCO3 is going to be still more weaker base than Na2CO3. Okay, so still NaCO3 is okay, it will give pink color, but for NaHCO3, it is not going to change any color. Again, it is going to be colorless. Okay, right, moving on. No, okay. During the reaction of some metals with dilute hydrochloric acid, the following observations, observations are made by a student. Right, fine. So, first of all, what happens when I have metal reacting with an acid? What is going to be the overall reaction? You are going to form salt plus hydrogen gas is going to get evolved. This we have to remember. For example, if at all I have sodium reacting with HCl, you are going HCl to form. This is the salt formation. Now, instead of HCl, if I had put H2SO4, then you would have formed Na2SO4 plus H2. The salt is going to be different depending on what anion is going to come here and here. Okay, anyways, fine. So the, student, the following of is made, made by a student. They say, he says that silver does not show any change. Now, what happens when I have silver reacting with HCl, right? Now they say that the reaction is not happening. Is it true or false? Oh, that means it is observed. What they're telling is explain these observations the proper appropriate reason. Okay, they're like, this reaction is not happening. Why is it not happening? Silver is less reactive than hydrogen, so it cannot replace that's hydrogen from the compound. That's it. This is the displacement reaction where this should be more reactive and this should be less reactive. But Ag silver is less reactive than compared to hydrogen, so this reaction won't happen. Okay. Next, some bubbles of gas are seen when lead is treated with acid. Obviously, what so what gas it is? Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen. That is why it's coming. Right. The reaction of sodium is going to be is found to be high. Highly explosive. That means if I make this one happening, it is going to be very highly explosive. Why? Because sodium is sodium is highly reactive. Highly reactive. 
because his sodium is very 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 highly reactive right next the temperature of the reaction mixture raises when aluminum is added to the acid now all that you have to understand is that uh, this reaction is going to be an exothermic reaction right this reaction is an exothermic reaction so a lot of amount of heat is added so obviously it is going to become hot so is it right the what kana is it a thermic reaction i don't understand is it a thermic reaction thermite reaction is different kana thermite reaction is this thermite reaction if i have to write it i'll write it here thermite reaction is uh, mgo plus al is going to give me al2o3 plus mg right whenever you are going to form al2o3 this is going to give me a lot of amount of heat very a very very high amount of heat so this reaction is what is called as thermite reaction thank you sir okay whenever you are going to form al2o3 displacement reaction and forming al2o3 those kind of reactions are what are called as thermite reactions okay right this is normal acid plus metal which is going to be exothermic and that's the reason why it is becoming hot the temperature of the reaction mixture raises okay right moving on how many questions are there okay we are half way through next state the reason for the following lemon is used for restoring the shine of the tarnished copper vessel why because the copper carbonate reacts with acids yes exactly because the tarnished this things copper is going to get corroded by reacting with co2 to form cuco3 this is what is big this is what is your tarnished this thing we say right okay now this cso3 is going to be basic in nature we know all carbonates and bicarbonates are little basic in nature right so if i want to remove the cso3 i have to make it react with an acid right and that acid is going to be used in lemon because lemon contains citric acid okay lemon contains citric acid it is going to react with cso3 that is c not cso3 cuco3 copper carbonate right and so that this can be removed and your Got, uh, so if it reacts with this, I mean, what is how to put it? Your citric citric acid reacts with CuCO3 to give me copper. Now this guy, this get get me a back me shiny appearance because copper is getting formed. Plus your so uh, plus your CO2 is going to get eliminated. Okay, right. Anyways, next uh, a metal sulfide is converted into its oxide to extract. the metal from its sulfide ore now what extract from oxide huh? easier to ex extract from oxide, oxide sir than sulfide. Uh -huh. oh, okay so all that you have to understand is right so generally uh, there are uh, some different different uh, you know uh, what to say stages in extraction of a metal first stage is what is called as your concentration don't worry about these things these are just extra information for you first is what is concentration where you remove your big big impurities so like say sand is there some leaves are there all those things you remove right second step is what is your oxidation and in this oxidation again you will it can be of two types it can either be on something called as calcination or it can be something called as roasting right and the third one is what is called as your reduction process and there are a reduction process you will be getting the impure metal with you right and this impure metal is going to form pure metal in the last step called as refining and here you get your pure metal okay right so now after oxidation right basically whenever oxidation is going to happen i'm going to convert it into its oxides right why is it that i have to convert it into oxides because the next step where i'm going to get my reduction that is i'm going to have the oxide i'm going to reduce it to get my metal back if it is oxide it is going the reduction process is going to be easier okay and that's why you say the extraction of metal is going to be easier it's because the reduction is going to be easier these are the steps okay and from the impure metal easily i'll be able to refine it to get your pure metal okay that's the reason why we are doing it okay next copper wires are used in electrical appliances why So because uh, they are good conductors of electricity. They are good conductors of electricity. And they are cheaper when compared to silver. Okay, what? One second. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, well, definitely. Two two reasons you told me. One is 
uh, it is a good conductor of electricity and why are we not going for au and ag even though they are better conductors of electricity because of the cost right au and silver and gold are even better conductors than copper right but we don't go for them because it will be costly any other reason say for example ductile. iron is little ah tell me what is it because they ductile ductile But ductile and that every metal is there. Every metal is there. That's okay. Not every metal, sir. Sodium and all those. Ah, exceptions are there. We'll go to the next chapter and see. Yes, right. Next thing is it is having very high melting point. So we know when our current flows, lot of heat is produced. Is it not heating yes, effect? Electric energy was studied. Yes, sir. Right. So now lot of heat is going to be produced. If I'm going to have a very weak metal, right, that is going to melt. Because of the because of the large amount of heat getting produced, right? So I don't want it to melt. Means what? I should have very high melting point. Then copper has very high melting point. That is why it is getting used. That is also the third reason you can write. So even aluminium wires can be used in electric appliances, right? They can be used, but again, copper is very a better conductor. And to be to be little, this thing aluminium is little more. You know, uh, no copper is only costly, but still it is going to be a very good conductor of uh, better conductor than aluminium. Yes, sure, sure. Okay, right. Next, moving on. Explain uh, the following. What is that? Explain the following given equation. Giving equation each. Okay. Baking soda is heated. Baking soda is what? Na two CO three. No. No. Now what happens when it goes for heat? Sir, Na two CO three. Na two CO three. Exactly. Sir, Na two CO three. Na two CO three plus H two O plus CO two. Right. Yes, This is the reaction. Oh, next. Washing soda. Na two CO three. Now what happens when I heat Na two CO three? Nothing happens. Washing soda Na two CO three into ten. Reaction. So washing soda is Na two CO three plus. Uh, I mean uh, Na two CO three. Ah, that makes sense. That is also correct. So if I write Na two CO three dot ten H two O on heating, what happens? Nothing happens to Na two CO three. It lose okay, the water, water of crystallization. Lose the water of crystallization. Exactly. That will happen. Dot ten H two O. I mean, you are going to remove it as water vapor. <clears throat> okay, right. Next, gypsum is heated. What is gypsum? CaSO four dot two H two O. Two H two O. Now, Sorry. when the heat, what is going to happen? We are going to form CaSO four dot half H two O. That is what? Last of Paris. 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 Calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Right. Plus one and a half H two O. Ah, plus one and a half H two O. Yes, absolutely. Right. Next, uh, equal length of magnesium ribbon are taken in two test tubes A and B. H two S O four is added to the test tube A and H two C O three is added to test tube B. Now, easily you can understand that H two S O four is going to be a strong acid. H two C O three is going to be a weak acid. Okay. Now, identify this test tube showing I a vigorous reaction. Obviously, the test tube A it is going to have strong acid is going to have a vigorous reaction. Give reason to support your answer. Yes, it's because it's strong Sound. acid and weak acid. Okay. Name the gas liberated in both the test tubes, and obviously it's H two. You know how to write the reaction. Also, magnesium plus H two S O four will give me the salt that is Mg S O four plus H two. Right. If magnesium reacts with H two C O three, then what is going to happen? We are going to form Mg C O three plus H two O plus C O two. Remember, whenever H two C O three is there. I have to go for CO two formation also. Not H two O. Sorry, here it is H two. Right, H two and CO. Okay, right. Next, write the chemical reaction for both the reaction. We have seen out of the two acid, which will have a lower pH. Again, this is a very important yeah. point. Strength and pH are inversely proportional. If I have a very strong acid, that is going to have a very less pH. Right. So, which one will have a lower pH? Is going to be H plus right? Which one will have a lower H plus concentration? That is going to be H two C O three. H two C O three, right? So, so, so things you have to remember is your pH is inversely proportional to the strength of the acid, right? And it is inversely proportional to the concentration of H plus also. Right, because most strong acids will have higher percentage of the higher concentration of carbon. Right, fine. Next, <clears throat> moving on. Okay, what is a salt? 
right? A salt is a product formed with formed when an acid and a base reacts. You know that, right? Formula of any two salts. You can take any two acid, any two base, and make it react and make it into the NaCl, NaSO4, MgSO4. Everything is a salt, right? Also, name the acid and base from which the salts are obtained. Also, if you will do it, because NaCl is going to get obtained from what? In uh, HCl plus NaOH, right? And M say for example MgSO4. If I ask you what base and what acid we use, obviously you have to understand. You make it into ion first. Okay, you make it into ion. Right, and all you have to understand this to the cation, add OH minus and get the base. Right, to the an to the anion, add also. Now, ah, right to the anion, what what? Anion is ah A minus for the anion, add H plus and get your acid. That means if I add OH minus to the cation, what I'm going to get? MgOH twice. Right, and to the anion, if you add H plus, what are you going to get? H two SO four. Okay, so to you take the salt, you make the cation anion, and you add cation, you add the oppositely charged species. That is your uh, OH minus. Mg two plus is positively charged. Add the negative charge OH minus. Uh, from that to the SO four two minus is negatively charged. Add H plus. Obviously, what are you going to get is H two SO four. Like this, we'll be able to name. If you take any salt, this idea is going to work. You'll be able to easily tell. What kind of uh, acid and what kind of base you used? Maybe I'll ask you one more question. Say if I needed uh, NH4Cl, right? Tell me what is the acid and base used? Ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Right now you'll move it into cation anion first, NH4 plus and Cl minus. To the cation add OH minus, so definitely you are going to get NH4OH. To the anion add H plus, you are going to get HC. So it is going to be ammonium hydroxide and HCl. Okay, right. Moving. Next, uh, write the names, formula, and colors of any two hydrated salt. Now you know so many examples. CO2 so or two H2O is going to be uh, you know I will write it. CuSO4 so dot two H2O is going to be blue in color, right? And, and if I write FeSO4 dot two H2O again, what is the color of FeSO4? Clear green. Green, right? So this way you can write. Okay, right. Next, uh, what color of litmus? What color of litmus in an aqueous solution of? What will be the color of litmus in an aqueous solution of ammonium chloride salt? Okay, now guys. Now this is a very interesting question, right? So when you have salts, they can be generally of three types. One, they can be either acidic salts, or they can be basic salts, or they can be neutral salts. Okay. Now how do you decide whether salt is going to be acidic, basic, or neutral? It is going to depend upon what kind of acid and what kind of base you have used. Right. For example, in an acidic salt, it is going to be formed by the combination of a strong acid and a weak base. Obviously, whichever is stronger, that is going to dominate. Right. And in case of a weak, a basic salt, we have to use a weak acid plus strong base. Again, whatever is stronger is going to dominate. And in case of neutral acids, you have to use strong acids and strong bases. Okay. Right. For example, if I give you, oh, there is no space. Okay. Here, here I'll write. I okay, hope you understood this, right? Now, if I give you, uh, I don't know, CH three COO Na, that is sodium acetate. Sodium acetate is going to be a strong acid or weak acid. How are we going to find? First, we have to find which acid and which base we have added first. That we know how to do, right? We are going to have CH three COO minus at Na plus. To this, we'll add the H plus. That means I'm going to get CH three COO H. To this, we'll add the OH minus. I know I'm going to get NaOH. I know NaOH is going to be a strong base, and this is going to be a weak acid. So definitely, this is going to be a basic salt because NaOH is a strong base, whereas CH3COH is going to be weak acid. Whichever is strong will dominate, right? So now this is going to be a basic salt. Same way, what are they asking in this question? They're asking about ammonium chloride, right? Ammonium chloride. Again, we know what is the acid and base used, right? So we know it is NH4OH and HCl, 
I know HCl is going to be a strong acid. Ammonium hydroxide is going to be a weak base. So definitely NH4Cl is going to be an acidic salt. Because it is the, because it is coming from a strong acid as such as HCl. Okay. Right. Fine. So what will be the litmus scale? So we understood that ammonium chloride is going to be acidic in nature. Right. So definitely it is going to change your litmus color to red. That is blue to red. It will what will happen. Yes. Anybody has any, any problems with this? No, sir. Okay. Moving on. That's it. No more questions. Oh, there was one. Nothing. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We have successfully completed. Okay, we have touched almost all areas and absolutely good. You'll be ready for the you'll be ready for the exam in no time. Okay. Any other question do you want to ask me? Yes, Kana. Yeah, can you tell me if uh, calcium phosphate is acidic basic or neutral? Okay. Okay. Calcium phosphate first will make the formula. Calcium is Ca2 plus phosphate ion is PO4 3 minus. Now you will shift and shift to form Ca3 PO4 twice. Okay. Before moving on to the before moving on to the answer to the question asked, this is somewhere present in our body. Where is it present? Enamel. Okay. Teeth. Teeth. Enamel. Right, tooth enamel is what is going to contain this. Okay, fine. Now, again, we'll make the, we know what are the cations and anions present. To the cation, we'd have OH minus. So, obviously, we are going to get CaOH twice. And to this, we'll add H plus. So, obviously, we need have three H plus ions. So this thing formed this H3PO4. This would have been the acid, and this would have been the base reacting. And I know CaOH twice is going to be weak, sorry, strong acid. I already gave you a list. Sorry, strong base. Right? I know CaOH is going to be a strong base. And H3PO4 is going to be weak acid. So definitely, this is going to be a basic salt. Okay? Thank you, sir. Right. Anything else? Anybody wants? Salo? Fine then. I'll wind up the class. Right. Thank you, sir. So the class is still sounded. Ah, but that's okay. We can go prepare. For, if I can go through the chapter one more time and prepare for your test. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.